Now it's time to go ahead and build our search shortcut. And this one uses a helper shortcut. So before we build our main one, let's look at how the helper shortcut works. So by the way, I always make helpers gray so that they stand out differently in my list. And I tend to make them a single character string there. So that makes them easier to find. So we have our comment here. This is a helper shortcut that provides a list of keywords we can use when we are entering second brain information. And that means entering into our text dictation or our media notes. And also when we want to search for keywords in our second brain notes. So you remember our little comments about adding the uh, helper. Well, this is the helper we're talking about. So if no keywords are selected, this shortcut will output a default keyword. So let's see how this works. The first thing we do is a list, which is just another action. Let's see what it does. Allows you to specify a list of items to be passed to the next action. So we just simply built this list by typing all these in, and then we can just keep adding until we've gotten all of our keywords. Although I recommend fewer keywords rather than more. Otherwise, you know, you get so many of them that it becomes kind of useless. But of course, that's up to you. Now, the only thing is that when we type these in, we want to make sure that we put a space after every single one of them. So I'll click out here and you can see there's a space there. I'll delete it so you can see it and then I'll add it back in. So every single one of these has a space. That's annoying that the keyboard pops up, so I won't do it for every one, but they all have spaces. That's because in our options, we have decided we want to use multiple keywords, which only makes sense. We may have a note that's applicable to work and to field notes, maybe to locations, or maybe it's a receipt and it's a receipt for work. So we've decided to choose multiple and with a little prompt, please choose keywords. Okay. And we check to make sure that it's actually choosing from this list. And we can tell that by the little connector there. So now we use an if. Now the if is going to decide what to do because it's possible that I didn't check anything. So if that's the case, if this chosen item does not have any value and we can select, decide what that is, does not have any value, then let's make another little keyword. And I've just chosen this for the default. This could be work. It could be field notes. It could be whatever you want it. So if you always have notes that generally have the same keyword, this is what you would enter in here. Now, when you make a keyword, you want it to be unique. So the easiest way to do that, of course, is just to make it a character string with no spaces. And you may want to use your initials or something else here, maybe your company initials. And that way it's all one character string and it's going to be unique and not just something that would naturally occur inside of a note and confuse your search. Okay. And then you want to make sure there's a space just like in the other ones, a space after that one. So now if we don't have any value, we substitute in our default and we stop this shortcut and output this. All right. So this is what will come out of this little helper shortcut when we use it inside of a main shortcut. Otherwise, if we did check some stuff, let's output our chosen item. Or if we've chosen more than one, it'll be our chosen items. Then we end if, and then we stop this shortcut. So one of the advantages of doing it this way is that you only have to type this list once. And if you go to change your keywords, like maybe you decided you want to add another one, then all you have to do is edit it in this shortcut. And because this will run inside of our other shortcuts, it automatically updates. All right. So even though this is meant to run inside of another shortcut, let's just run it so we can see how it works. So here we are. Please choose keywords. That was our little prompt that we decided. Here are the keywords that we typed into our list. Let's choose work and field notes. 
and say done. So our Shortcuts app does something really cool. So it helps us test these things. At the bottom, it shows us what the output is. So I'll click on the list view here and you can see it's given us two keywords that we have selected and this will pass these keywords on to our main shortcut. And hopefully this is going to make more sense in a minute. So now that we have that built, let's go ahead, let's go back to our text entry demo. We'll click here and then down where this node is, this is where the helper goes. Let's go here and run a shortcut. We'll drag that in and put it right there. So we're actually going to run a shortcut from inside this shortcut. So let's tap here and we're going to find it. There it is, EDC Keyword List Demo. So it's going to run our little helper that we just built. We'll twirl this down. It's asking if there's an input that we want to pass into this shortcut, but there isn't one because this is really just a list generator for us. So there we go. We don't have to worry about that. So now let's append our choice that is going to be delivered by this to our note. So let's get our pen to note. We'll drag that and we'll put it right down here. So we're going to append the shortcut result. And by the way, it populated that automatically and put the link there. That's kind of cool. And we want to append it to our note. Okay. Now, I like to have some separators before our keyword list because it'll make it cleaner looking in the note. So I'll tap on here. I'll hit the keyboard return. And that puts our cursor at the end here. I'll tap and hold on my space bar and drag over. Then I'll go get me some dashes on the keyboard and hit a carriage return. And that makes it a little neater. All right. So we show the folder. And now we don't open our note because we've appended something to it. We want to open our appended note. So we'll click and hold here and we'll open our appended note. All right, drum roll. Let's try this out. So we're going to enter our note. Hi, this is our first note using keywords. We've added a keyword helper shortcut to give us our list. Okay, so we get a security check the first time we run it. Allow EDC to run another shortcut. Yes. Okay, so now it's running that other shortcut right here. And that other shortcut is providing us with our list. So let's choose work. Let's choose field notes. Maybe we want to choose receipts. Hit done. Okay, there's our note with our botched up stuff there. And then there are the three keywords and there's our little separator. So when we build our search tools, it'll be easy for the search tool to find these. We've already added our keyword list into our text entry demo, but I want to go ahead and do that into our daily log demo as well, because it's a little tricky. So let's open this up. We'll come down here to where we want to put our keyword helper. We'll go to favorites. We'll run a shortcut. Tap on here. Run our keyword demo. Now, once we do that, let's append to our note, right? So we're going to append whatever keywords we selected to our note. So what note? To our no value note, our new note that we create because it's the first note of the day, or to our appended note because we've appended it with a second input a second entry into the day. Well, the shortcut apps make that easy because what we can do is we can choose the if result. So whatever condition is met, that's what it's going to append to. And just like always, I like to have some little spacers there. Let's run it real quick. We'll get our security check. Now it's running our helper. We'll choose EDC work, okay? And there we see, this must be our first entry of the day. So let's go back and run it again. So 
So it's running our helper, but we're not going to choose any. We're just going to hit done. And look, it appended our default keyword, EDC second brain. We'll go back and we'll look at our search brain. So this shortcut uses the EDC keyword list helper shortcut and the find notes action. If notes have a tag or a link to another note, the find notes action may crash in this build of iOS. And hopefully that'll be fixed very soon. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed. So we dismiss Siri and continue. Then we run our little helper, right? Our keyword list demo, just like we did in our text entry. So we'll get the exact same list of keywords. Then we find all of the notes where all of the following are true. So let's check our options here. We don't need an input variable, so we're good. So now we find all notes where all of the following are true. The folder is our second brain folder and the body contains our shortcut result, which would be our chosen keywords. We sort by the last modified date with the latest first, and I like to limit this to the most recent 10 notes because I find that if I'm going to be looking something up, it's usually going to be in my most recent 10 notes. So if notes has a value, in other words, if it finds something, let's choose from what notes we want, and we only want to choose one because we're only going to be interested in opening the one we're interested in. So we have a prompt. Here are the 10 most recent notes. We show our folder and we open our chosen item. But what if it doesn't have a value? In other words, what if it didn't find anything with the selected keyword? It shows an alert and it says copy search criteria and open folder. Look at our options. And in the title we have nothing found and we show the cancel button in case we just want to cancel and not do a search. So we copy our shortcut result to the clipboard. Then we show folder all iCloud. Then we show our second brain folder. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, let's run it and we'll see. So now we're running our helper. Please choose. Let's choose receipts. Done. And look, it found that one note that we just made because it has EDC receipts in it. All right, so let's go back. Let's run it again. Now, let's choose EDC test. Done. It didn't find anything because we didn't make any notes that use that keyword. But do we want to copy our search criteria and open the folder? So let's say, OK, let's do that. OK, so it's opened the folder. So now let's click in the search window and paste our search criteria. And sure enough, even though it wasn't in our second brain folder, it found something in our recently deleted. I hope that makes some sense and how that works.